Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are having a nice day over in the States. I'm actually located in Europe. I live in Macedonia. I'm an American citizen. We moved back as a family in 2007, and I have a lot of experience both hosting EMA and FDA inspections. I worked in the United States. I'm in quality assurance since 1995, so it's 20 years going on. So that's a little bit of information about myself. So I would just like to get the class started. Okay, so today's class we're going to be talking about similarities and differences between EMA and FDA inspections. And the learning object objectives obviously are what those differences and similarities are. I'm also going to talk a, a briefly about MHRA and serious breach requirements. Uh, this is very specific to the UK, to England itself. And then we'll go through some typical inspection kind of findings. The agenda today is really we're going to talk about who the regulators are, and the focus really is on uh, the Europeans and the Americans. Canada is there, but we're really not going to be talking about Canada today. Then we're going to talk about preparation and logistics of the inspections themselves. We'll only touch about briefly about how you as a sponsor should prepare, then what kinds of things the inspectors are actually looking at during a sponsor inspection, what happens during post inspections, and then what's going on in the industry today, especially with the regulators themselves and between them. So who are the regulators? Well, we have the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, obviously. For those of you guys in the United States, this should be very familiar. Then we all have in, in Europe, we have the European Union and European Medicines Agency. And we also have the MHRA. And the reason that I put them in there specifically is that they are actually the regulatory agency or health agency. They're, all, they're also called the health agency or the competent authority. Those are all similar terms and mean the same thing in the industry. So you may have heard all three terms being used. And the MHRA inspectors are really the go-to teachers of the rest of the European Union. They've had more experience. They've been doing inspections a lot more. You'll hear a lot about your, your companies or your affiliates or your partners having inspections in the UK. And so they are really the leaders in thought and in processes. So what do we think about when we think about the inspections themselves? Well, there's certainly lots of different types of inspections. There's good manufacturing practices. There's good vigilance practices. But we're going to focus today on good clinical practices. And so with regard to all of the agencies, it's what, are, what is the intent of the inspection? And basically, it's to ensure that the studies are conducted not only to the local regulations and the global guidances that are out there, but also to protect the rights, safety, and welfare of human research subjects. And this is obviously typical and we, we should all know this. When they do the inspection, they're really looking to make sure that the data can support the sponsor systems, and the application. So a lot of the inspections happen pre-approval. In the United States, we have the new drug application, the NDA, once that's submitted for marketing approval. In Europe, we call it a marketing approval application or an MAA. So there's some terminology differences, but basically it's uh, the agencies are going to come out and inspect you as sponsor of the study and inspect your sites. Um, that have done the studies on your behalf, and does the data support uh, what you, your claims are in terms of efficacy and safety. So what are the regulations? And I, I'm not going to go into in depth in this. You can obviously go to the Google and look up the Code of Federal Regulations for the FDA, you know, FDA.gov. You could Google EMA and get the directives. And so, but what's the differences? In the, with the FDA, they, they put out draft guidances or draft things that are going to go into law and ask for feedback from industry, EMA does the same, as does the MHRA. The EMA, they don't actually post any laws. They're called directives. And what the European Union states are supposed to do is apply those directives into local legislation. So they have each member state, and there's 28 of them, and they include countries such as Germany, France, Spain, and so on. 
they have one year from the time that the directive is issued to make it into local legislation. And this is what the local inspectors then need to follow, as well as what the investigators, the clinical trial investigators need to adhere to once they're put in place. We do have uh, ICH E6 as guidances, and a lot of the categories and information within ICH are actually adopted into those directives. With the MHRA, their laws are actually called statutory instruments, and they're numbered. And if you, you could also go and look up that information online as well.